Hello everybody and welcome. I am Matt, Senior Client Success Manager for White House Custom Color. And before we start chatting with Jody and Mindy, I just want to make a couple announcements here. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button on the WHCC YouTube, make sure and do that um, so you get notified for awesome events like we're going to have with these two today. Um, make sure and follow along on Instagram at WHCC Pro. And then also for any details you want to know about all the amazing products that we make here in Egan, Minnesota at White House Custom Color, check out whcc.com for all the details that you could ever want to know about that. And one more quick thing, if you do have questions for this awesome pair along the way, make sure and put them into the chat and we'll get, uh, get those answered live for you today. And if you are watching this on the Rewind, go ahead and put questions in there. We know how to find these guys and I'm sure they would be more than happy to answer any questions we have. So without further ado, thank you guys for being here all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes. 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 So. Yeah. And Minnesota weather hasn't turned super cold yet, so you picked a good time to come. <laughs> so that's that's I'll, a good thing. I love all the trees outside. Yeah. The leaves It's changing. beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. So for the last six years, we've had a lot of awesome conversations. I've been to your studio. I've seen Mindy's amazing organization that uh, I'm actually very jealous of. <laughs> like, it's just, it's unbelievable. And had a, had a chance to really share a lot of cool experiences with the two of you. So we're very, very honored that you're here today. The topic that we're going to talk about is very relevant to the industry right now. You guys are always pushing the envelope on what's new and what's exciting. So we're going to really dive deep into that. But before we do, I'd like you guys to just tell everybody that's listening today who you are. So Jody, let's start with you. All right. Well, uh, my name's Jody Rail, and I've been in Las Vegas now for 22 years. Wow. Never thought it would be that long of a time at <laughs> all. Yep. So uh, you always think a lot of people say, oh, I'll, I'll spend a couple of years there and go back home, wherever that is. And right. then the city grows on you. Yes, <laughs> so, yes, for sure. But yeah, so I moved there um, to start teaching at a high school and I taught photography and journalism and photography Kay. and uh, kind of changed. I did photography on the side and then it mm -hmm. became my full-time my full -time thing. Awesome. So yeah. Um, my husband and I and then our son ended up running the studio yep. for many years and then uh, I needed help, hired some part-times, they kind of trickled out as sometimes they do and then in 2018, into 2018, my sister moved out to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. thought she'd give her couple years a chance <laughs> <laughs> in Vegas and uh, I really needed the help so in 2019 she started working for me and it's okay. it's just... Yeah, like you said, her amazing skill at organizing not only what you can see, but the like internal processes, right. uh, systematic, like looking at something and saying, this isn't a very efficient way of doing this. Let's see if we can make it more efficient. And so I always appreciate that about yeah. my sister. So yeah. she's, she's good. And one kind of cool thing too, just for everybody that's listening along, you live in a cul-de-sac. Yes. And it's you and Mindy and your parents. Yes. Right in that yes. cul-de-sac. Yes. So you can't beat the commute. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Siri no. tells me, or Alexa tells me every morning, your commute is one minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so bad. So Mindy, tell us a little bit more about you. Um, I joined Jody's team in 2019, early 2019. And uh, uh, before that, I was also a teacher and uh, did some landscape design and I led a crew in uh, installing a big landscape for one of our clients and then my parents were ready to retire and so I was like okay let's go to Vegas right. <laughs> <laughs> and so we sold the business and we've moved them out here to, to Vegas and well not out here I guess but yeah. moved them out to Vegas and right. and uh, so then yeah. Jody needed help like I said and I was like okay she's like I just need somebody to edit photos I'm like well you got it all set up and 
So she, she praises me on organization, but she really does have her own processes and she's really got her, you know, her style and her look dialed in. Yeah, and she sure. makes it fairly easy for somebody who has never even opened Photoshop or a Mac computer <laughs> to figure out how to do it. So, well, yeah. and you know, as we're talking about the top 10 tips today, and for those of you that are following along, the organization that goes into these photo shoots, not only in the US, but overseas, I can't even imagine. Yeah. the detail, you know, and your, your Pinterest boards and, and how you're figuring out outfits and locations and all that. And we're going to we're gonna talk about all that, but never downplay that piece <laughs> because, you know, you guys work amazing as a team. And then Shelly, um, yes. your other sister, who's not here yep. today, but she helps a lot behind the scenes too. Yes. So when you think of a family-run business, <laughs> yeah. you can't really get much deeper than three sisters, That's you right. know, doing it together. And I'm sure yeah. that you guys get along perfectly all the time. All the time. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> As all siblings do. It, absolutely, <laughs> just like my sister and I. So before we jump into the the top 10 tips, which everybody is here to listen to today, what are some of the favorite spots that you've been to shoot? Because you've been to some amazing locations. Yeah. It's like, what's kind of top of mind to you? Oh, the nice thing about living in Las Vegas is that you're really not too far away from a huge variety yeah. of different locations. So like, four hours you can be on the beach. Mm -hmm. And that's like, because it's so different from the dry desert, like I love being able to go out to the beach and shoot at different locations like in California. Just, I mean, it's it's right handy, it's, it's there, but yep. then you can like basically just go inland a little bit and you got some desert and palm trees and yep. things like that. So that for being like kind of local, um, that's a really nice thing about, about Las Vegas because I mean, you've got mountains and mm -hmm. beach and everything that's like fairly close. Yep. Um, recently, I would say my favorite spot that I'm really actually excited about going back um, was Belgium. Okay. And I really liked it. It was like a, we went to Ghent, mm -hmm. which is a kind of smaller town. It's not as touristy as some other places, um, but it's just beautiful and laid back and the beer was great <laughs> and, and the chocolate was good. I <laughs> so, but the buildings were just, just beautiful and you know, yeah. it, the canals, it was right. it's gorgeous. Yeah, when we think about historic buildings in the U.S., it's very different than you think about a historic building in Belgium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or anywhere in Europe, for that yeah, matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. One yeah. of the shots we had was a castle that was, you know, thousand plus years old. Like, wow. In Vegas, that's unheard of, obviously. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh, that's five years old? Tear it down. We're going to build something else. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, too old. <laughs> very different thought process. Okay, so enough of my questions because mm -hmm. people aren't here to listen to me today. They're here to listen to you guys. So let's right. let's talk about your top 10 tips. All okay. right. So we're just going to go through these um, one by one. These were all laid out by you guys ahead of time. And thank okay. you for doing all the work on leading up to this and getting all the information over to us because this really is an awesome topic. And for somebody who wants to get into doing conceptual destination shoots, and you were very specific about that, and I think it's very important to note that, that you are designing these. Yes. This is not being chosen, designed by the client. No. You are taking care of all of this, which right. that's a big separation there of, of commitment. It is. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times if a client's like, well, I want to go here and they're directing it and kind of willing it, you can get ideas from them, but you really have to either sometimes rein it in, but you're the expert. Right. If you know, you, you know what's going to work and not going to work for you to be able to produce that for them. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So your number one here, mm -hmm. plan yep. enough in advance. Um, your dates, yes. your destinations, your style goals. So what do you guys recommend as a team for that lead time? Like how long does it take to put one of these together? Right. 18 months for international. Wow. At least eight months for domestic. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. And <laughs> these are our goals, obviously. Yeah. You know, we've learned from doing several of these, like even domestically, you're like, you can't just, you can throw something together in a couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. it's not going to work as well. Yep. You need time like to book your flights, to book your travel, but then you have to give enough time to like have your clients book their plans and make those plans and commit. And, and commit and yeah. even. Mm -hmm. And so it's really hard for a person to commit if you don't have any of those details. Yeah. And they're like, yep. you know, what am so I getting into? So with the dates then and talking about your clients, do you float the idea past people and then 
figure out what dates work for them and then book it, or do you say this is when we're going? Both. Both. Okay. Both. It really. Yeah. We kind of mentioned this, like how you, where do you find your ideas or places that you want to go? But mm -hmm. um, it, it is. Yeah, you definitely want to feed off of them because if they have an interest, you want to jump on that. Mm -hmm. If you if you can't fulfill that interest, then they're going to go somewhere else. Right. So, yeah. you, but then also, we are so also have our own bucket list <laughs> where right. we want to go yeah. and where yeah. we want to shoot. Absolutely. And so, we have a whole list of our bucket lists on our website. And if someone's like, yeah, I want to do that, but I want to do it next, you know, this summer. It's like, okay, we'll move it up. Yeah. So, so on, just, I want to make sure everybody caught that. Yes. So on your website, mm -hmm. you have a list of places you would like to go. So if somebody is perusing that and says, oh, I've always want to be photographed here. I have family there. Mm -hmm. They can reach out and say, I see yeah. you want to do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. we okay. do. We actually have a little form link on the okay. on the destination page that says do you where would you like to go mm -hmm. and that way they they put in you know Rome then I come we can be like oh we have two clients here that are interested in Rome let's reach out to them and see if they would be available at these dates and these times when we're available or maybe they have a, a maybe they're going at uh, Christmas or something we're like well, could we make that work you know right, so right. and I've heard that they actually have some good wine in Rome mm. oh, that, that I awesome. think you would like to <laughs> <laughs> I've never been there so I, I'm excited about that <laughs> I haven't either 18 months that's that's amazing I mean that yeah. that's a lot of planning but I, oh, I can yeah. only imagine you know for all your shoots and, and we're gonna show um, a video that you prepared Mindy of how you're finding these locations mm -hmm. like that takes a lot of work and it especially does. you're also this is not just all you're doing you have a whole other business that you're running right, to. Right, which right. is which is why you have to start early because yeah. you can plan a little bit at a time as you you know the idea is 18 months out or even eight months out you want to make sure that you have time that you set the location you set your styles what you kind of want to put in there your fashion themes yeah. right. and then you have to have time to market it that's the biggest thing is you yeah. have to have time to book those clients convince them that this is a what the experience uh, for the experience yeah. and have you know so that they can yeah. plan and and enjoy it enjoy it and not yeah, yeah for yeah. sure and there's a lot of things for photos too that go in like you mm -hmm. have to research a place like for permits for instance mm -hmm. like make sure that you and a lot of times like those permits can take you know six to twelve weeks to get everything processed if that's where you want to shoot there and some permits are small amount of money but some yeah. are larger so you need to research that ahead of time you, last thing you want to do, I'm sure everyone's experienced that at some level, like walking into a place and, and they're like, oh, okay, where's your permit, you know? Yeah. And then that's so embarrassing and in front of, and awkward mm -hmm. in front of the client. Mm -hmm. um, and then admission tickets and travel, uh, local travel, like buses and things like that. You know, sometimes you need 30 to 45 days in advance just to, to yeah. purchase those before you go, so. So then, on for your number two tip, mm -hmm. once you guys have your date set, you have your, your clients booked, like all that stuff, mm -hmm. your next tip is communicate openly, and, and you said don't gatekeep. Yeah. You know, allow open access to everyone attending the trip, and I think that that's really good because, you know, I, I can list off like eight different ways that, you know, I communicate with people, you know, every day, but to have one central place yeah. I'm sure it makes that a lot easier. Can you explain how you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we, we use our website for that. We use um, three different levels of communication. Okay. We've got our, our destination page, which is just a, hey, this is where we're gonna go. Are you interested? Once they say yes, or they've communicated with us that they're, they wanna, they're interested in that, then we kind of uh, show them the, the hidden page um, which says these are all the places, these are the styles, these are the, um, the dates, all of that stuff. The, now here, if you click this button, this will take you into the protected page, which we have as a, a password protected page on our website. And that one has the micro details, like this is where hair and makeup is going to be, this is the pin drop on Google or Apple Maps that we're going to for our first look. This is how we're going to get to the next one. So yeah. yeah. And then do you, it, within that, that level when people are starting the commitment process, is that when you're talking about like the financial end of it or, or how does that work into that conversation? Uh, usually about the, yeah, the hidden web page. Kay. That's the second level. So okay. like if the public page is out there just to, for interest, if people know what we're doing and where we're going, that, that's open to the public. Okay. Um, once somebody contacts us, um, set up a consultation. Just even if they're not if they're not local, 
meet with them on Zoom, mm -hmm. you know, have that conversation, a consultation exactly the same way as you would for any other client, right. portrait client, whatever. And that's when you, you bring it up, you mean, yeah. You have to. You have to. Yeah, mm -hmm. and probably yeah. give a range of, you know, you can be expecting from here to here kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. okay. exactly. And okay. and just tell them too, like, it's a little flexible depending, I mean, cost change. If you're going in the high tourist time mm -hmm. of year, summer, yeah. you know, um, is, but that's when people have time off from school. So just know that it could, it can range. And right. if they don't make up their mind right away too, this closer you get to, the time of travel, the more, yeah, expensive, more expensive it gets. It's gonna get. yeah, so, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, and number three, you mentioned mm -hmm. um, finding like micro locations mm -hmm. yes. and avoiding the, the tourist trap spots. Yep. Yes. You want to avoid the tourist spots because you don't want to Photoshop all those people out right. because they're not dressed in your style or in your <laughs> fashion. And that's, there's nothing that ruins it more. Um, so we found that uh, for us, uh, we don't want to exhaust ourselves and we don't want to exhaust our clients. We're yep. carrying around 40 pounds of gear. They're in shoes that they may not be super comfortable in necessarily. Right. Um, and then the mom or the dad or whoever's with us, they're also carrying around a change of clothes or all of the other stuff. So there's a lot of um, equipment that we're carrying around. and. and so we want to keep our areas super small that have a mm -hmm. lot of variety. Yeah, um, and yeah. I, I don't mean to interrupt nope, you, but that's right. um, you mentioned a football field sized area. Can you explain yes. that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really easy to be like, I want to shoot here and here and here and get carried away. But thinking about it in terms of an area that you're familiar with, like a football field, okay. then you're like, okay, I know I can walk from you know one side to the other side, thinking about carrying what you need or a camera that's actually a pretty great distance if you're like photographing every five feet. Like right. that's gonna take you an hour to get across the Absolutely. short end of a football field. Yep. So long side, you know, that may be like a city block, mm -hmm. you know. So thinking about, okay, going a mile, like that's, that's a long that's race. A that's long a long Because you're on foot. You're on mm -hmm. foot. Yeah, okay. And even if like, you're like, well that mural is so cool and it's really close to this, this other mural, but you like, and he's great at pin dropping it and mm -hmm. seeing how far is that. And you're like, oh, that's like, you know, 800 feet or whatever the right. distance is. You're like, that's probably not really yeah, within a good so. walking distance for photo shoots. So we are actually running a video right now, which is pretty cool. So Mindy actually mm. sent this over to us. And this is one of the ways that you are finding a location. So you're yeah. literally starting with the earth, dropping into London, looking mm -hmm. at street views, and you're, you're mm -hmm. creating this micro location mm -hmm. football field size mm -hmm. area, yeah. which is really neat. And you know, the technology that's available all this yeah. now is, is it's fantastic. Amazing. You fantastic. Know, and to see how you know you found the spot and then we're gonna see the image that was actually captured there. Mm -hmm. um, it's I can't imagine the the time that it takes to like walk down these streets. You have to have some sort of kind of a parameter. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and it, it would be very easy, like you said, Jody, like, oh I like that and I like that and that's yeah. so cool. And like right. you would be on overload. Over yeah, yeah, you're completely yeah. overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And then the nice thing when we were shooting in London and we found those little side streets that, that were off beaten path, that's mm -hmm. not originally what you think of. Like you're like, oh, we gotta go see St. Paul's Cathedral and then walk down like yeah. just everybody else. But shooting in those areas where there's no people and it's just a side area, yeah. then you don't, you're fairly new to the area too. So how do you get around? So Mindy did um, not only London and then the street view and then finding that building, but then how do you get from point A to the next point B, point C? Right. So she made a little walking map, mm -hmm. which was great because when we were there, she just had her phone. We just followed mm -hmm. just like you would in your car, except yep. you're on foot. And um, that way we were like, oh, we got here to the mirrors. We got to the mural. We got to. Other benefit of that is that you're not staying in one spot. So yeah. people don't become annoyed with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, regular citizens. Because I'm assuming that you yeah. draw just a little bit of attention. You, you do a little bit, you do. And so you want to keep, yeah. in, in a city, you want to keep moving. Yeah. Um, it's a little different when you're further out in the country or you're yeah. different, you know, you're more secluded, but yeah. definitely in the city, you want to keep yourself moving so that you can't be yeah. traced. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. So moving on to number four, so mm -hmm. your styling. And I think this, mm -hmm. you know, as somebody that is, you know, an artist heart and has a background design, the styling piece of this is really, really fun. So you're giving your inspiration, you're creating your mood boards. So let's talk about that a little bit. So 
Mindy, do you kind of drive the bus on this? I or? do. Okay. She is, I will say, I will come up with like an initial little thing that's, I have like, so we need something that moves. That photographs really yeah. well. And so then Mindy's like, what moves? What fabric moves? What style moves? Yeah. And then she so, takes it after that. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration from from runway or runway and Vogue and, and okay. Fashion Week, those types of things. So if you're now, is that I'm going to interrupt you. Here. Is that something that you watch in the U.S. or is that something that you watch in the destination that you're going to? Because I'm guessing they're different. They oh, they, they definitely are very yeah. much so. Yes. Um, so if we're going to London, I'll I'll look up um, British Vogue. Okay. Or if we're going to go to Paris, we go to Paris Fashion Week. Okay. And you kind of just, it's just a Google search. That would and be no I, fun at all uh, in Paris Fashion Week, would it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. It, it, you know, and, and part of it is, is you, you see a lot of the runway shows and you're like, we would never wear that. Some of those things are really different. Yeah. And you're like, I can't, that's not a street wear. I've, I've learned a lot in, in all of the different terminology. But um, so you, you take the core concept of whatever those fashion themes are, and then you translate it into something that that your teenage clients um, would find interesting or like, yeah, I can wear right. that. That's cool. Or even your adult clients. Or even yeah. adult clients. Yes. It, you know, destination, conceptual destinations are not limited to teen clients. Right. So. so one thing I thought was interesting, I want you to expand on this a little bit. You, you style guide guys first, and then you adapt for your female clients. Yes. Why? Um, for me, it's easier to take a, it's easier to find uh, inspiration images for men and then I can always adapt them uh, for, for women. Okay. Um, so it doesn't really have to do with it's harder to find pieces and, and, and styles for guys. It's that they're the easier ones because maybe there's not as much options. available, less options. It, for, I'm a In girl, a and so I understand all the parts that goes into a female's outfit better. Okay. For me, I have to start with the thing that I find more difficult. Oh, okay. And so um, yeah. there's, in men's styling, I find that the the differences are in the accessories. Okay. A lot of accessories. Hmm. Um, and so you can just by changing the type of material, let's say a pair of suspenders, changing the type of material from just a pair of a black suspenders and the width of it to leather completely changes the outfit. Right. And it changes the style and the, and the, the theme that you're going for. And so um, adding a, a brown leather watch instead of a gold type of Rolex watch, it completely changes that. Um, and so it's much more in the, the details for, yeah. for a guy's outfit, okay. whereas, um, for females, you've, you've got different silhouettes, a lot of different silhouettes that you can work with for females. That's so fun. So how far in advance of the trip are you actually like doing fittings and like that stuff? Because I'm assuming that you have everybody come to you, yeah. put everything on, so you make sure that you don't have any surprises when yep. you yes. get there. Yes, I mean, that's the goal. That's, <laughs> that's the, the goal. goal. Yeah. So It works best yeah. when you that can have them come to our studio and we spend yeah. an afternoon if we have four different outfits, four different styles, or six or eight, or how many, yep. for how many days we're going to shoot, um, but three or four weeks would be good. Just because if something doesn't fit, you need to like return it, get it, go find something mm -hmm. else, yep. alternate. And if they like have the core pieces, you're like, oh, I have, I have the perfect scarf that's going to go with this, or I have, I need to go, you know, get some fabric or something to make. Something we're lucky because yeah. our mother is a seamstress, so oh, nice. sometimes I she didn't has. Know that. Yes, yep. sometimes she. We're like, Mom, we need something like this, and so <laughs> she'll be like, pull it out of her brain and, and make it for us. So Actually, which is super awesome. This photo right back here with the orange dress. Um, oh yeah. The long train is uh, something that our our mom put together. Oh, so yeah, that's pretty, awesome. Yeah. So I believe that we have a video of some of the styling um, that you have done mm -hmm. here, Mindy. So, and it starts off, and you can kind of explain how this works, yeah, so what we're looking at here. This was our fringe. Uh, this we, we did this photo shoot in Ghent, and so we started, uh, the concept was fringe, really popular right now in 2022, 23. And so we really wanted to get into that. So then we said, this is the style. And then the client, the theme, the, theme, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the client then was like, yeah, I want to do this here. And so mm -hmm. he found the pieces that he wanted okay. so um, to put it together. So the, so the client actually went out and found these. Yes. Things from, okay, he that's finds cool. In this case, in this, this case. client. Okay. Yeah, and actually most of our clients, once we explain 
the theme mm -hmm. and kind of what we're looking for, then they they start shopping and it's part of the fun for oh, them. Yeah, for sure. Or like pulling things from their own closet. I think most of this he had in his closet, which is great. Huh. And so mm -hmm. he just like pulled it together and he's like, what do you think about all this? And we were like, yes, I like everything. Let's change this piece. Yeah. And hmm. so it, it cool. involves them and then they start to take ownership in it, which is right. really important. Yeah, that that's a and huge piece of them. We definitely want their <coughs> personal style to come out. If yeah. they have, if they're not comfortable in in, in yeah. something, then we don't want to force them work. into that specific exactly. type yeah. of clothing. Mm -hmm. They need to be comfortable yeah. with it. Yeah, that's super cool. So number five, okay. um, mm -hmm. we talk about this in the photography industry a lot, you know, creating the experience for people. We live, especially post-COVID, in a very experience-based society. Yes. You know, we all lost out on a lot, you know, during mm -hmm. that time. And, you know, Las Vegas in particular, you know, was hit extremely so hard, hard mm -hmm. on that. Um, how how are you doing that? I mean, aside from the obvious, but how are you really creating these unforgettable memories for these uh, families that are doing yeah. these destination shoots with you? I think the biggest part is just putting yourself in their shoes. Like this is, you're traveling and how would you want to remember this place and this location and and how, do you, how would you treat, you know, your kid if, you know, that you were at this place and this location. So making it a fun experience, trying to make sure everything is organized and that they, you're communicating with them because the worst thing is to not have all the details and being right. stressed. Mm -hmm. So being able to like alleviate the stress by having that information and then just like swag bag. Um, when we were in London, I brought my client a bottle of wine and you know, mm -hmm. and had my packaging on it, which was nice, but yep. just something to like just show your appreciation and that, you know, had we had dinner together um, at the end of the photo shoot, we all, you know, in Belgium, we shared um, beers and yep. tried, you know, whatever the local thing and then some all went off shopping and things like that. So yep. just having that kind of time where you can relate to each other and build that relationship and just, you know, enjoy each other right. as well as working together to create this these looks so yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. yeah, yeah trying to, to have all that so mm -hmm. that that's a perfect lead-in to number six mm -hmm. so you're you're scouting and I think yes. that this is a really big piece of the organization yeah. side of it you it know? is so for those of you that are listening along and we even actually discuss this as a team here like what is the difference between finding the locations and scouting but they're they're very different because you're using scouting as a way to triple check Yes. and make sure you're not gonna run into things. So tell right. us about your process on that. Well, um, we had differing views we did. on that. Mindy we did. was like, I can find everything on Google. I don't need, we don't need to go like, there. To go there. And I'm it's like, like, it's gonna take know. too much time. I need time. to check the lighting. I need to make sure the building's not gone. You know, gone, because that happens in Vegas, <laughs> yes, believe me. It does. <laughs> and, um, or like the rain is you know, coming in, and where is there awnings, what's going on that we can shoot. Yep. Um, there's construction, scaffolding going up. So there's so many things that can just um, not, that you can't find out right. online. You have to physically see it. And also, as a photographer, videographer, you have to look, where's the light coming from? It's reflecting off this building this you know this is not going to work for morning this is not going to work in the afternoon yeah. whatever um oh there's a parade scheduled great yeah. you know so finding those kind of things is so important to go to the location and to figure out how you're going to get there with clients who are expecting you to be the tour guide yeah yeah you, know? you literally i mean on top of being the photographer yeah. you are the entertainment yeah. You are the organizer. You are you know, the person that they are relying on for all the information. Yeah. Like yeah. it's really like a wedding. It really mm -hmm. is overseas. Uh, overseas, yeah. <laughs> you know, like or like you're the tour guide. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we've even scouted out and marked on our um, website, like uh, for this shoot. Here's the bathrooms, oh. because that's always a question. And you can yep. walk around for 20 minutes or more looking for a public bathroom or mm -hmm. a bathroom that you can use. Or knowing like, okay, you can go to that coffee shop, but it takes a dollar to get in to go yep. to use the restroom or whatever. So just finding yeah. those things. Yeah, and if you have yeah. to do that three times in a day, that could be an hour that's yeah, gone. Exactly. You know, just looking, yeah, that's yeah. a great tip. Yeah. How often do you have to like use a backup location? Has that happened? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It um, rained on us in Miami. Oh yeah. <laughs> we had to rearrange and the schedule completely. That was a 
Um, yeah. That one was nerve wracking when we were in Miami. We had to completely sw swap it around and. Hmm. Um, we found the that coolest one parking garage. It's actually, I think, one yeah, of the images definitely. that yeah. And I, I can remember and seeing that image the first time, like, that is the coolest spot. You're yeah. like, well, yeah. that's a parking garage. Exactly. You know? like, <laughs> but we were supposed to do that on a different time of day, but it was like cats and dogs, Miami rain, torrential. <laughs> and we're like, okay, well, we're going to go to the parking garage because we have some coverage. <laughs> right. And um, so knowing that and being able to be a little bit flexible, mm -hmm. but you still have to be able to communicate that with clients. So yeah. fortunately, you know, Mindy can get onto the website and change that so that across the board, everybody kind of knows. Yeah, that's um, awesome. What a great team you guys are. So navigation, we really liked how you said travel like a local. Yeah. You know. And I think something else that you added in when we were talking about a month ago, you're like, and don't be an, an annoying American. <laughs> 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 so how does one do that when you're, when you're navigating with a group of people? Um, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, it is difficult. You want to be modest. You want to uh, not be loud. Yeah. That's the number one rule. It was actually yeah. a professor in college that we traveled with. He's like, yeah. you need to be, you need to watch how the locals are and how mm -hmm. in London especially they're very reserved and so you want to be reserved as well yeah um, and so I just pretty much take that as across the board I'm gonna watch and observe first and then um, right. we will figure out how to and for the photo shoots too it's really nice if you have somebody who is a local to kind of guide you or right. at least someone so like for London one, um, we worked with another photographer who grew up in London. Oh, and wonderful. So she knew, like, okay, she goes back every year to see family. Um, so she's like, okay, this is, you can buy this Oyster card, or you can just, everything's electronic now, so you don't need cash, so you don't really need to go to the airport and, you know, change mm -hmm. over your money or anything. Like, the, the, you know, they're very, you know, oriented with electronic payments. So mm -hmm. that was nice to have. So having a local person, even if they're not a photographer, just someone that you can ask questions right. and find out how do you do it while you're there. Yeah. So no, mm -hmm. that that's a great tip. Mm -hmm. So when you say travel like a local, are you talking about like Ubering or are you using like the oyster you were saying mm -hmm. or you know ferries? Are you walking? Like what what is your main mode when you're in movement? You know between places. Mm -hmm. um, in in London, we use the underground. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was it was uh, did efficient. You, did you mind the gap? We did. We did. <laughs> <Light> the <gap. laughs> we were very careful. Yeah. We didn't want our equipment falling down yeah. there right. for sure. <laughs> we learned very quickly though too, like we did have to get somewhere fairly quick and we were a little disoriented that first day. So we mm -hmm. did Uber, but then we found out by talking to the hotel concierge, like just get a taxi, they're right out front. Like don't wait for an Uber, which was eating up time. Mm -hmm. So we just were able to get into a taxi. They were cheaper than the Ubers hmm. and um, it, for where we were going. Yep. And that was really, really easy because the subway station wasn't close by. But then on other locations, we were like, okay, that's, you know, the subway's gonna work. Right. We did learn that in shooting in a big city is a lot different than in a more rural town. Yep. So whatever that, like sometimes you, you just have to rent a car. There's mm -hmm. no other way about mm -hmm. it, or if you know you're flying into San Diego, you obviously you know you can Uber to most places if you keep your locations fairly close. Tight, yeah. 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 But or that could I add know. a significant amount of time, expense, mm -hmm. yeah. hassle. Exactly, yeah, and it sure. takes a long time to get even like a couple miles. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know, you can't expect in your Los Angeles that could be a 30-minute drive. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And if you can't more. expect your clients to go hiking up this whole thing, especially if they're not, you know, uh, you know, used to physically used, used to, to that, that, you right. know, yeah. which is yeah. yeah. And and even if they're in good shape, like it's just a lot of work to like carry all that stuff and you're standing on your feet all day and yeah. and if they're not used to that, that's that can right. be really tough. And in London the cabs are really cool. They, they are. are cool. I, I got a ride in, in, in my first black cab experience. It was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. it yeah, was they're great. super cool. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to number eight. So we're going to talk about marketing and booking um, because, you know, people that are following along and listening and excited about this, like how do you even begin this process of finding people who want to invest time, travel, financial, everything into this? So you had mentioned when we talked social media, obviously, mm -hmm. snail mail, like personal invitations, mm -hmm. newsletters. How are you utilizing those things to book these people? Well, ideally, 
I mean, it's the same way as how you'd want to book your regular clients. It's, I don't remember um, what somebody said, but you have to see something seven times before you actually like yep. respond, right? Like, yep. There's the whole thing. Um, so just being in different media formats and being, you know, having it out there for people to see is very important. Yep. But I think for me, um, listening to clients when I'm working with them, say in the fall when we're doing their senior photos or family portraits, I'm asking them questions. I'm making small talk, but my, but I'm also trying to find out about like what they might be interested in. If they did, if we have a really good experience and we, we hit it off and we, mm -hmm. you know, those clients that become friends. Absolutely. You know, I'm like, I think they'd be so cool to work with on, you know, a shoot like this, you yeah. know, and so I will you know, find out what their bucket list is, like we talked about, mm -hmm. but if they like traveling and they like photos and you become, you know, closer than clients, yeah. then I just will f call, you know, call them up and say, hey, I think I'd like to plan a shoot at this location mm -hmm. and I think you'd be great and I would love to experience this with you. Yeah. Would you be interested? And what a cool phone so, call that would be. You yeah. know, as a client to get that from, you know, somebody mm -hmm. that's as talented as you guys are that you want to share that experience. And, you know, I can say from traveling, you know, yeah. internationally, it takes a certain personality a person to be able to do that with because a yeah. lot of personality traits come out oh. when you're traveling. It, you know, you throw a little jet lag in there, a little stress, you know, uh, different yes. culture. Um, so I think that's yeah. really important that you said that. And I hope everybody listening along picked yeah. up on that. You're kind of hand picking like yeah. who you're going to do this with, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. You definitely want to, you don't want to have a really bad trip. I mean, no. due Nobody to the personalities and the mix. and. And, and and sometimes, for whatever reason, some people just, they don't get along well mm -hmm. with me as much. We just don't click. And yeah. that's totally fine. Like, not everybody has to be best friends and not all your clients end up that way. You still give them a great service and you have a professional relationship. Um, but this is a little more, like, you get to know each other better. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because yeah. you mm -hmm. have a very intense amount of time that you yeah. are spending together. Yeah. So yeah. Um, as you are planning, it's very important to go into the left brain mode yeah. and think about all the costs that are associated yeah. with this. Yes. So how are you doing that? What are some of the things that you're calculating into this budget to create the, the window of like you're looking at this investment from here to here? Mm -hmm. Well, the easy stuff that's to calculate. Yep. How much are flights or, you know, driving to get there? What the public transportation could cost, um, you know, or car rental, like that. Those are the hard costs that you can, you have a range. A hotel, you know, how much that is. Yeah. Um, and of course that varies, right. but it, it gives you some ideas. And then, um, not to interrupt you, but do mm -hmm. you let people book their own stuff or do you do it for them and get reimbursed? So. We, we've done it different ways. We've done it different ways. Yeah. And yeah, we've, go ahead. Uh, we've. We've said, okay, well, this is, you know, you get your tickets into here and you get your flight into here and we will provide a, a complete package. This is where we're going to stay. Are you fine with this? Okay, yes. We'll book a room yep. yeah. and we'll, we'll do that. Other, other times people want to do it on their own. So mm -hmm. it, we do it both ways. Mm -hmm. And I could see pros and cons mm -hmm. of that either direction, you yeah. know, because mm -hmm. if you're doing it for them, then you get, you're keeping control. You make sure yeah. that everything is being <coughs> done in the right spot. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you know, on the wrong flight or the wrong hotel exactly. or something across town mm -hmm. or something like yeah. that. And then you have the harder costs to figure. How much time is it going for you and your team to plan this? Right. How much time is it going to take to shoot while you're there? Um, hair and makeup, you know, if trying to, if you bring your hair and makeup person right. with you, which is a great experience um, versus, you know, hiring somebody local, you know, like again, it kind of just, there's a lot of costs involved with that. And then you've got your permits, which, you know, yeah. that can vary. Can vary. Mm -hmm. um, and then your little things like your swag and liability insurance yeah. can vary from place to place too. So with the writers and things. So yeah, you have all of those other. So just a few things. things. A few just, just a few things. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget to pay yourself, right. your payroll for you and your team. And also. Mindy likes to get paid. Yes, uh, I, I do. Know. And then also, <laughs> you know, meals. You know, when I was teaching and we would go on a conference, 
like we were given meal money, mm -hmm. you know, like for diem. the day, your yeah. diem. Yep, so you need to, as a photographer, and you're like, this is my business, you need to give yourself a per diem. Like, right. you can't go and not have food. <laughs> like, right. you need to you be able to- You get hangry. You get hangry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to make sure you're covering your costs mm -hmm. yeah. for at least the day of the shoot when you're working. If you're vacationing, then make that separation. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, that's, that's a really good tip. So, you know, as people are watching along here, like it's, this is all super fun and really exciting, but at the end of the day, this is for business, yeah. Yeah. you know, and you have to make it work for that. Now, if it's just vacation, that's a little bit different, right. but if you are doing this as a way to make money, you really need to think about all those line items that mm -hmm. you just listed, probably another 50 after that. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that really takes yeah. some time to I just make out. a spreadsheet, and I hate spreadsheets, that's Mindy's thing, <laughs> but I will initially, when I'm trying to give a quote to a client how much it's gonna cost, like I'll just put in a spreadsheet and get like an estimation so that I yep. know and what we're looking at. I wanna say that when you price that experience, that needs to be done near the beginning. Right. It needs to be done at least 18 for international, eight for domestic. It needs to be done at the beginning so that when they come to you and say, hey, how much is this? You can say, this is how much it is. Yeah. And it's totally worth it. And here's a video yeah. from the experience and you're similar yeah. to this. And you're, you're excited right now. Yeah, so let's, let's look yeah. at it. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. Know. you have to capitalize on You have on to that know what right this now. is yeah. as early as but possible. we didn't have that down. Like the first time you do it, you're like, wait, I don't know how much this is gonna cost. Yeah. You don't. Mm -hmm. And so you just have mm -hmm. to put your best foot forward and Right. and try to figure it out. And that's why it's so cool to have you guys here today because you have a lot of these under your belt mm -hmm. and for people that are following along that want to do destination shoots, whether it's domestically or internationally, mm -hmm. like there's a lot to think about. Yes. You know, and you don't want to underprice it you know, you, and you want to attract the right client that's willing to invest mm -hmm. at that level that you really need them to, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I would say one of the best things is to try a local destination first. Mm -hmm and really keep track of, okay, I filled up at the gas station, here's how much this yep. is, meals, and then kind of expand out. Right. You can even, on that local, you can even make your own town into a destination. destination. Right. So you yeah. don't have to necessarily even go out of the state or to a New York or something like that. That's a whole different, I mean, that's like practically international. Yeah. New York is crazy. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I've never now, been there. Now, one would argue <laughs> that Las Vegas is crazy. <laughs> that too. That yeah. too. It yeah. Is. But you yeah. can definitely say, like, we're going to do a, a destination shoot here, and we're going to go to those places that you may not even know exist yeah. in your own town. Right. Exactly. And just really make it a cool experience that way. That's a yeah. really, really good tip. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. So we talked about, you know, kind of pricing the things to think about and doing the math for the trip itself. Mm -hmm but I know that you do a separate sales session mm. for these when you come back and you're right. not bundling any products in, anything like that. Right. So how does that process work and what are you selling to people? Right, I think that sometimes a lot of photographers will look at that and think, oh, well, I'm, I'm selling them the experience, so after the photo shoot, I'm just gonna give them all the digitals. Mm -hmm. You need to stick to your process and your the way that you would run a portrait session, like you have the consultation, you have the shoot, you are prepping them, you prep them for the order session, all of that, you need to still do that yep. for a destination shoot. And it's easy because you get home and you're tired, and it's been a long, great vacation and work trip, yep. and them too, and life goes on, but then you need to come back and have that in-person sale um, and show them all of the great images and, um, figure out what do they want from this, mm -hmm. you know, trip. Yeah. So what- And how do you lead them through that process? You know? So I have, we talk about it at the consultation first, okay. which is really important. So way at the beginning. Way at the, at the beginning. beginning okay. mm -hmm. Like what would you want to take away from this experience? Like what do you want to have in your home after you get back from your vacation? Like we all got to the vacation where like they put in the you know green screen background and we're <laughs> right. holding the got sword the and the, the Titanic you. behind yeah. you, right? Yeah. And so like if that's what you want, no. But I mean, we ended up you know we end up with so many images, so many great images. Oh, I can only imagine. They're not going to just sit on my hard drive or your hard drive or your phone, and you're not going to like see them every day and enjoy and remember. Mm -hmm what a great family time you had together or that time, you know, maybe it was just, it's the, you know, the child and you, like mm -hmm. having that. So yeah. I love being able to do albums and trying to show people like, this is that experience. This is this, you know, this the place, the story, the, the story of, of 
of your experience of there. Of this experience. And yeah. if you have two looks or if you did a two-day shoot and you've got four looks, what a great like way to have like a chapter book of in, in an album or yeah. um, something like that. Absolutely. So. so magically, you mentioned albums, which I was hoping <laughs> that you would do since well, I, I so casually laid this up here on the did. table. <laughs> um, now, this is not from one of your destination it shoots. It is not. Is, okay. No, but but th you guys actually saw this being made out in that the lab this yes. morning. So I'm just going to turn this towards the camera here so we can see a little bit more detail of this. So this is one of our um, albums, and this has the common Combo cover, mm -hmm. and this is actually a high gloss metal, mm -hmm. which Jody Rail loves metals. Yep, I do. Um, and we're actually going to see another metal print made this afternoon. Yeah. It has the premium um, white leather, and then we actually did your custom DeVos on the back. And I'm not sure if we can show that in the camera or not, if it's going to pick that up, but that looks beautiful. But um, to see this process, just tell us like what that experience was like for you guys this morning to see one of your albums actually being made. Yeah, I was blown away. I was fascinated and just so impressed with the hand-touched assembly mm -hmm. and creation of this. Like even the process of, you know, how the leather is creased and the tools that, you know, they came up, they're like, okay, yeah, we're going to use this. We need a line that looks like this and put this all together and yeah. this is how we do it. And, and just the amount of pre uh, precision and meticulousness, which I love because I'm a I'm a perfectionist. And she does too. And she does too. <laughs> yeah. And so being able to see, like, I couldn't even see, like, the on the spine there, like, oh, yeah, it's a little bit off right here. We're going to fix that. Yeah. And, like, you know, when it's assembled and, and put, it's, like, completely straight and just making sure that it's just fabulous. And Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that, that really ties into, you know, the whole experience that you're doing for your clients because, you know, this is so high touch, mm -hmm. completely handmade, mm -hmm. and you're really creating a handcrafted experience for your clients on yeah. these mm -hmm. trips too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that's a perfect compliment. And I mean, what a great talking piece. Like, you know, you experience that, but then when you come home, nobody wants to look through your thousand million photos right. of your trip. But this can be like, oh, look, Grandma, look at like where we went and what we saw and what, right. you know, it's a beautiful keepsake from that experience. Yeah, that's so awesome. So we do have one bonus tip too. Mm -hmm. If we have time, I think mm -hmm. we, we have enough time okay. to get on that. So you have a bonus tip, and your bonus was a collaboration mm -hmm. and, and to work with other photographers. So how does that work, and how are you blending that together for some of these trips? Yeah. Well, it's not just with other photographers okay. first, <laughs> okay. but it is a collaboration of as many professionals and people that you want to take a little ownership in. You okay. still need to stay in control, but collaborating with other photographers, um, that works great because yeah. you can share the weight. It's a lot to plan a mm -hmm. destination. Yeah. And if you can Especially work... Especially if you have multiple clients. Um, yeah, you, or if you're a single studio owner and you don't have a team. If you don't have a Mindy? If you don't have a Mindy, <laughs> which everyone needs one. <laughs> um, then work with another photographer, whether local or, if, you know, in another state. Yep. Um, we're all kind of in photography groups. We've got all the White House, you know, yep. photographers here. Yep. So reach out to someone and say, hey, I like how you, I like your work. Hey, would you be interested in working together? Can we go to your city? And then we'll reciprocate. Okay. Go to my city. Because the local always knows. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and so then working with the hair and makeup artists, especially if you have a dedicated hair and makeup artist, because they, we can get the styles ahead of time. We always bring our makeup artists in and say, okay, this is the style. This is what we're going for. This client has short hair. What do you think? Oh, I think this would look good. And we put it right on the lookbook. This okay. for her, their hair. This is the makeup I need to bring. This is what I want to do. So we have the whole look and they're bringing in their expertise to it. Right. And then yeah. of course the clothing, if you wanted to, you could partner with a boutique or mm -hmm. you know other people. That's awesome. Yeah. And then that just expands that network so it nicely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Well, and then, yeah. Oh, this is just fantastic, guys. I just, the, the amount of detail and knowledge that goes into these is just, just staggering. But I do have one more question before we let you go and sign off here for the day. Mm -hmm. If people are inspired and they want to follow along with your adventures, where can they find you online? Where, where, where do you hide out? Well, we actually have two. So I will tell about mine and you can say about Sure. The, okay. So we have Jody Rail Photography 
dot com. It's yep. my website. Has all the information, so if you need to go there, but Instagram, you know, Jody Rail, and um, on TikTok and on YouTube has a ton of like cool videos that we just did from London and Ghent um, from the summer, and then uh, San, Diego. San Diego, which we did not that long ago, and so yeah. and we did a lot of those. We worked with other photographers. Um, for those shoots. Yep. So the second place then is onecollective.io. So that's the website for uh, One Collective. And okay. then the Instagram is one at onecollective.io as well. And awesome. then our Instagram is, not Instagram, excuse me, our YouTube there is, it's kind of long, one co at onecollective.togetherwecreate. Oh, yeah. So Very <laughs> cool. And so, yeah, so One Collective is just a group of photographers that work together to organize and do destinations and be able to allow other photographers to come join us where they can experience it and not have to worry about organizing all those fine details and being overwhelmed with all of that part, but right. they can focus on booking their client to come and enjoy an experience like that. Awesome. Well, this is fantastic. Thank you guys so much for sharing. You're just a wealth of knowledge. And we really hope that everybody watching along either live today or on the Rewind has really enjoyed all the information that you guys have been so generous with sharing with us today. So just a couple of reminders before we let you go. If you do have a question and you want us to have um, Jody or Mindy answer it, feel free to put that in the chat later on. We'll find them and, and I'm sure they'll be kind enough to answer that for you. Um, follow along on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you get notified for awesome things like today that uh, that we did with uh, Jody and Mindy. Um, follow along on Instagram at WHCC Pro and for all your product details again WHCC.com is the place to be. Thank you so much for joining us today and thank you guys for traveling all the way here. We uh, have a full day ahead for you yes. and we will let everybody out there get back to it. We'll see you in the next one.